Hey, Eric. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> Not too much. It's good to talk with you again. Uh, how's yeah. everything been? Everything's been good. Yeah. Good. Been yeah. Your, your, your face is showing a little bit better, though. That it's healing well, you know. And and it must, it must be nice to look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Okay, I see this person. I know her." Yeah, yeah. It did take a little bit. Um, my nose is pretty swollen, and then I got like two black eyes from from the nose. Uh, so I looked pretty rough for a little bit, but I'm looking a lot better now. That's good. That's good. And you're having really the, the best year of your career, of course, you know, the, the performance and the finish uh, against former strawway champion Jessica Andrade February a few weeks ago. Now you uh, <laughs> you went back and you beat former flyweight challenger Tyler Santos. I understand you like to dig in and, and study your fights pretty hard. How many times have you watched the Santos fight by now? I have watched it a couple of times. Like I literally got back. Uh, from the fight and got to my hotel room and like wanted to watch it over uh, just because I knew it was a tough fight and I knew I made some mistakes so um, so I, I've watched it a bunch over uh, since I've watched it with my coaches and by myself a bunch of times. How much have you kind of glean, been able to glean from it I mean are, you must I know you weren't super happy with your performance obviously there's reasons to be happy with it too but you know what what have you kind of been able to dig in so far in these last couple of weeks and, and kind of learn from their performance? Yeah, you know, um, I definitely, it was funny because I, I I was pretty bummed like right after the fight because I was like, oh, I really want, I wish I could have got a finish. Um, but, you know, she was super tough. Um, she had a lot of answers to uh, to things I planned on like hitting, like obviously like my double legs, my inside trips. Um, so there was like little techniques on the cage that I feel like maybe I could have done uh, better to maybe get some more of those takedowns, um, you know, bring my hands back quicker. Uh, she was fast. And she was, she was kind of catching me on the counters. Um, yes, yeah, so, so there's a, a couple of things I feel like everywhere. I mean, I'm happy that I was able to get the win and, um, you know, I think my fight IQ really showed in that fight. Like I know how to win a fight. Um, so now it's just kind of making everything a little bit more crisp. Well, it's better to learn from a win than a loss, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Like I remember after the first round, I was like, I didn't come all the way to Singapore to lose. So I was going to do everything I could to win that fight. Um, and you know, I think it's just kind of like the attitude you go after too. I feel like a lot of people they'll like win a fight um, and they'll be a little content with it. But I definitely wasn't content. I, there's a lot of things I want to get better. Of course, of course. Yeah. Things weren't really going, you know, your way early, of course, in the first round, like you mentioned. But even in round two, you were still having trouble, you know, getting her to the mat. Obviously, that's where you were looking to get her at that point. She's, you know, she looks to take you down. And then all of a sudden you end up on top of her. So you, she basically gives you the position you were looking for. Uh, what's going through your mind in that point? Yeah, that was funny because I remember I had her on the cage. I had her for, there for a little bit. Um, I was hitting her and I felt like I was winning, even though I, I couldn't get the takedown. I knew I had the better position and I was hitting her. Uh, the ref wasn't like separating us. And then she did kind of turn me around for a second. She got double unders and I felt her going for that throw, but I knew I wasn't, I could tell she misread it. I wasn't giving her like the forward motion that she needed to catch me with that. So I just like sunk my hips and I knew I was going to land like right on top. Um, and that's exactly what happened. And uh you know, she was still squirming me from the bottom and uh, managed to get up. But I, I knew that <laughs> her kind of throwing herself on the ground and me maintaining that position for a little bit was going to give me the round. Or I, I was looking for a submission, but uh, like I said, she was tough. Did you think maybe that was like a turning point? Because obviously, you know, first for the fighter who's trying to do that, thinks she's got something and then it completely goes the other way. It's got to uh, affect the mentality. Um, yeah, I think it was definitely a turning point in the fight. I feel like um, that round was pretty even until... She kind of pulled me right on top of her. Then it def definitely gave me the round. That's that's how I felt in the fight, too. I felt like um, after like I landed on top, I was like, oh, I know I'm going to be able to maintain position for a little bit and maybe even catch her in something. Um, so I knew I was going to win the round with that. And then uh, I think she, she kind of gets tired, too. And I could tell by the third round she was pretty tired. And, of course, you know, you got that round, like you mentioned. You got the win on the scorecards. You got the third round. Um, one thing a lot of people were, you know, saying pre-fight, it seemed like this was a fight that deserved a five round main event, you know, so much significance in, in uh, 125 with, with everything that's going on right now, but even still just your name and, and Tyler coming off of her uh, championship opportunity. It made sense for a lot of people, this to be a five round fight. You're obviously known for a uh, strong cardio. Uh, was, was there any pre-fight disappointment maybe that you didn't get the chance to have five rounds for this one? I definitely would have loved to have five rounds. If it was like the main event of another fight night, I, I would have definitely loved that. Um, I feel like I, I would love all my fights to be five rounds. I have the cardio for it. Um, and I feel like I'd have a lot more finishes um, if I had five round fights, because I don't think they'd be able to keep up with my pace. Um, but I knew I, I had three rounds to get it done. And uh, 
I feel like almost strategically, that's probably a little harder for me. I feel like five rounds would be better. Um, but, you know, it kind of just pushed me more. I think one of the bigger question marks a lot of people had uh, with regard to your skill set to start the year was your striking. But now you've had success at distance on the feed against both Santos and Andrade. You know, is your is your striking that much better now? Have you turned a corner in training or are we just catching up to the abilities you already had as a striker? Uh, I feel like every fight uh, you can see my improvements and I feel like I'm always trying to improve after each one too. Um, I think these past two fights I've, I've had to strike more because it's been hard to get the takedown. So you've kind of just been able to see my striking more, even if it was kind of already at that level. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm always trying to improve it. Everyone's asking you, of course, about, you know, the, this potential for you to be the youngest ever woman to be a UFC champion. We've heard women in the past boldly say that early in their career, that's that's their goal. We never really heard you say that. You've kind of been very patient, um, at least publicly, about the idea of this. At what point in your journey did you realize, like, you could be on the road to something historic or special? Uh, yeah, I, You know, I feel like it was always um, something I could do because I started so young. I went pro at 18, so I knew that that I kind of already gave myself that ability by starting so young. And um, I knew that I was good enough to do so. I feel like I don't like putting maybe like arbitrary like numbers onto things. I feel like it's kind of, especially like, bef I know like before I was in the UFC, it's so much pressure to get in. And then there's people my age that were in. And I felt like it was just kind of, fighting's hard enough. It's kind of like unnecessary pressure. You know what I mean? So I really just try to focus on um, the fight that's in front of me. And it's really, it's really done me well. I feel like it kind of keeps everything at bay and it's just I mean it lets me put everything into what really matters which is winning the fight and if you keep winning each fight then things like that are possible um that becoming the youngest U female UFC champ is is still possible for me um but that's not necessarily a goal it's just if I get the title fight next winning that fight against whoever it is is what's next but it is at least kind of a, a self-marketing tool you can use to kind of lobby for that title shot that you asked for right I mean you're, you must be at least feeling the need to, or, or maybe the desire to, to lean into that a little bit, let the UFC know, hey, you, you got something here you might want to promote. Yeah, I think uh, marketing-wise, it's definitely smart. I feel like they could definitely use that. Um, I mean, I'm sure they definitely know. They know everybody's stats and everybody's ages and things like that. Um, but I think they we just need to see how this Valentina and Grasso fight plays out and then, um, then see who's like next for the title. Are you going to be in town for that one? Are you going to Vegas? Yeah, I'm going to be in Vegas. Okay. Okay. Um, did, or did the UFC kind of work with you to get you there or are you just kind of going on your own? Uh, well, me and my manager kind of uh, figured it out. And I think the UFC is going to get me some tickets, I believe. So I'll be there. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah. you know, you've got a very sharp analytical mind for MMA. You know, we, we hear you kind of break down technique very, very clearly and concisely. And, and um, you know, you seem very familiar, of course, with the, the first fight between Grasso and Shevchenko and how that played out. How do you see the rematch going based on your observations of the two women? You know, I, I'm not I'm not sure because I didn't um, expect, I guess, that much out of Alexa. I didn't realize she's she's a great game planner, um, which I which I thought was I really admired that about her in the first fight. Like she stuck to the game plan. Uh, I felt like she was losing. She was definitely losing the fight, but she had drilled, taken the back off that spinning back kick probably over and over and she hit it perfectly. Um, so I feel like you never know. I mean, maybe she'll have a couple new tricks for this fight. And the only thing I, I feel like Valentina is maybe a little bit better of a fighter, but I don't think she necessarily like, uh, game plans or gives her opponents enough respect sometimes. So I don't know if she's going to make the adjustments. Um, if she does, I feel like she could win. If she doesn't, I can see Alexa winning. So I feel like it's a little bit up in the air. Cool. And that's an interesting take, um, about, especially about Valentina. Um, now, I don't imagine the world title would be turned around quick enough to be put on the line for a fight at Madison Square Garden in November. But if it's not your next fight, if you don't end up with that title shot, do you like the idea of competing uh, in New York again like you did last year? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to see because um, I have like a little fracture in my nose. So I need to see when that heals up. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll fight again this year, but hopefully soon. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. And, you know, yeah. about that New York fight, uh, you weren't really the crowd favorite going into that one. It was such a weird fight because you're you're from this area. I think you were pretty much the only fighter, might be one of two fighters who were really locally tied. Uh, and Molly McCann comes over from, from England and she's got more vocal support, at least, than, than you did. But you go in there and, of course, get the win anyway. 
you've got a greater profile now. So next time, in theory, you'll have another chance to fight at Madison Square Garden. Are you looking forward to the chance to, you know, maybe being the fan favorite next time? Yeah, I would definitely love to be the fan favorite next time. You know, I, fighting in MSG was always a dream and it was awesome to fight there, but getting booed <laughs> definitely wasn't part of that dream. Um, so I, I know I'll definitely fight there again, um, hopefully soon, and uh, hopefully be a crowd favorite this time. Sure, sure. Now, your win uh, over Santos, of course, was one of two major contender fights at Flyweight leading up to this title fight here, Manel Ferro getting the win over Rose Namajunas. What did you take away from uh, Firo's performance, uh, performance in, in particular? Um, I feel like, you know, it's funny. I actually um, I expected maybe a little bit more out of her, especially, I know Rose is a great fighter, obviously, in her own right, but I knew she was coming up a weight class, and I, that's that's pretty tough. I feel like 10 pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but in women's divisions, and then if you kind of, like, calculate the percentage, because we're not that big, like 15 to 25 is a big jump. Um, so I, I, I thought she was going to, kind of really maybe put a little bit more of a beating on her. The fight was pretty, pretty even. Um, I feel like they were both kind of getting pretty tired. Um, but, you know, I mean, she used her, her reach and she used her distance and her takedown defense to win that fight. Um, I, I feel like she did what she had to do, but it was a tougher fight for her than I expected. Sure, sure. And, you know, you alluded to this already. There were questions beforehand about Thug Rose's decision to move up in weight. What did you think of, you know, how she really hung in there at 125? She did start to, she actually won the third round on two out of three cards. So she was actually starting to build momentum as a winner. Yeah, I, I definitely believe that. I feel like she was doing better in the third round too. She could have definitely stole that round. Um, you know, I mean, I know she broke her finger too in the first round, which is obviously going to take away from her like performance, uh, be, like able to perform. Um, but uh, I mean, she did pretty well, especially coming up against someone who's, a, a big flyweight like Mano is probably one of the biggest flyweights like she's a tall girl um and she probably cuts a decent amount of weight so to have a fight to be able to fight her as well as she did I would say is pretty good I feel like if I was Rose I'd probably still try to cut to 15 um and I feel like she'd be able to finish more fights there and be able to be a little bit more comfortable um but yeah I mean she didn't considering she didn't do that bad sure sure I, you know I was talking with Rose before that fight she was saying that her body uh it is getting harder for her to cut the weight i think at this point she's also trying to live like a like a healthier lifestyle you know a little bit more so so i guess that's probably part of the reason do you can you kind of relate to that like being at 125 do you ever think oh man this is this is a tough to cut tough to cut the weight or do you do you think this is actually the right spot for you 125 i, I definitely feel like 125 is right for me i kind of get what she means if she doesn't want to cut weight and wants to live healthier but i feel like in fighting to be competitive you still need to cut that weight and you know you only get so many years of fighting so i feel like it's definitely worth um committing to um i feel like for me I, i'd stay at 125 uh primarily for most of my weight class for most of my career i mean you never know um but as of right now i definitely stick to 25. you had mentioned uh, i don't know if it was kind of more offhand or whatever but back in june after amanda nunes had retired you kind of made like the sort of an offhand comment about yeah, maybe I'll go up to 135 and fight for the title or you know, something to that effect. Was Is that something that you had really given thought or were you just kind of like throwing it out there? Uh, you know, my manager had brought it up to me and I and I didn't, I thought it was a decent idea, especially with um, the Valentina and Grasso rematch being made. And I wasn't sure uh, what was going to be happening next, like in the 125. Um, but I knew obviously it wouldn't be a title shot, so it, it would take a little bit. Um, and you know, I, I feel like risk and reward, like fighting for a title and moving up is definitely worth it versus just like a regular fight. Um, but that, that opportunity is kind of like came and went. So for right now, 25. So you're not really like, you're not one of those people who's like, oh, I've got to win two division championships, at least at this stage in your career. Yeah. For right now, I'm, I'm definitely focused on flyweight. Um, I mean, maybe in the future, if I, if I was holding my, held the flyweight belt for a while and I felt like I wanted to move up, then maybe I'll try it. But, um, but no plans for that right now. I think fans are going to like you because I think sometimes fans get a little tired about uh, fighters saying, okay, I've won the belt. Now I'm going up. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I think I'd, I'd probably stay at flyweight for a little bit and, and see kind of how it goes. As far as flyweight goes, you know, you're going back to your striking, especially, you know, you're in the top four now of the UFC's rankings. You're number, you're number, uh, two contender i believe but we'll let we'll throw the champion in there as the top four uh grasso shevchenko furo they're all well-rounded but they're better known for their striking how do you feel yeah. uh your striking you know kind of stacks up to theirs yeah you know it's i'm like the only like grappler um the top and like the top of the division right now it's all strikers 
Um, but I mean, I feel like I fare well. I feel like with my threat of my takedowns, uh, combined with my ability to, to purely strike, um, I feel super confident going into it. I mean, and I'm always trying to improve and I, and I know I'll, I'll make improvements, um, between each fight. So yeah, I feel like I, I could strike with any of them. And one of the things that struck me about, especially watching the Santos fight is the fact that you, you, I think you understood there was probably a better advantage for you to get it down if you could, especially when it got to a certain point in the fight, but you weren't, you know, uh, uh, blatant with your, your plans there. You were willing to engage and then strike and also transition from one to the other. And I feel like, do you feel like that's one of the, uh, like bigger assets of your fight is like that tr transitionary one to the other very quickly and easily? Yes, definitely. I feel like you can't, um, you can't get like frustrated or like be so desperate for like the takedown. If it's not there, then you need to keep moving. Um, either, you know, chain your takedowns together or let go strike or be able to hold position strike and then uh, go for it again. So I feel like those transition periods are are very crucial. And the last question I have for you is, is uh, kind of related to your, your background at college at Montclair state, you know, you were studying sports media uh, before you kind of put your education on hold. And I just saw you were talking about, ESPN had reached out to you about doing some broadcast related stuff. Is there anything more you can say about that? Uh, yeah. So um, I, I am going up to uh, into Connecticut there. I guess there's an ESPN uh, location there that I'm going to go up and, and do some work with uh, next week. Um, yeah. I'm super excited about that. They reached out to me. Um, I did an interview uh, with UFC fight camp and uh, the, the guy who runs that kind of reached out to me. Um, so I'm going to go and do some of that, which I'm super excited about, because that's something I've wanted to get into more. Do you think you're still going to go back to college at some point and maybe get that that degree related to that? I know your parents, like, I, I believe I read that your parents had not gone to college and they were excited for you to go to college. And now you put that on hold. So is that something that's kind of like long term plans, at least to still go back and get your degree? Uh, you know, I don't really have it in, in my plans. I mean, maybe when I'm done fighting and I have more time. Um, if my credits are still good, I, I'm not even sure. Um, maybe I'll think about it. Um, you know, at least I have my brother he, and he's in school so he can uh, graduate for them. But uh, but I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll see.